Fast 10 or Fast and Furious 10, there was actually a moment when I was watching this movie where I almost thought it was going to be good. The first act was enjoyable, but then it kind of went downhill from there. So let me start out by saying I'm not a big Fast and Furious fan. I actually recently just rewatched through the franchise many of the earlier films I'd never actually seen. So I'm kind of new to a lot of these films, a lot of the ones that I had seen I hadn't seen in a while. And this is one of the ones that falls more on the side of those I didn't enjoy, which is unfortunate to say, but at the same time, I will say it's not the worst one in the franchise. I do think this was a significant improvement on the last film, Fast and Furious 9, which I didn't care for really at all. There's a couple of things that do stand out in this film that I enjoyed a lot that I think are important for you to, to know about because they are entertaining enough. And that includes the first section of this film. There's kind of an intro that occurs that kind of ties in our main villain with Jason Momoa and it ties in a lot with Fast and Furious 5 or Fast 5 which if you've not seen, it's a good one to rewatch before you go and see this movie. A lot of the other films you don't really need to rewatch, it just kind of helps you know the family a little better. Fast Five actually, story-wise, plays into this one quite a bit, so you want to know that show. But other than that, you can follow this one pretty easily. It's got a great opening scene with Jason Mazzola kind of tying us back into Fast Five, seeing how he relates to everything. And then you have your first act, which involves a mission that occurs in Rome. And I really enjoy that act. You can see a few parts of it in the trailer. It felt while I was watching it like Fast Five most, and, and Fast Five, Six, and Seven, which to me is the best kind of section of these movies. And this had that same feel. I really enjoyed the way the characters were working together. I enjoyed the actual action scenes and the event that was occurring. It was really intense, and I enjoyed it. And so I was watching that first act, and I was like, this is actually looking pretty good. This may end up being one of the better Fast and Furious movies you've got in a while. And then you get to Act 2 and Act 3. And Acts 2 and Acts 3, instead of feeling like Fast 5, which I think is the best one in the franchise, it started to feel more like Fast and Furious 9, which I think is the worst one in the franchise. And so you have this shift that occurs there that was really disappointing, and it kind of left me just feeling really unfortunate about the rest of the movie. A lot of things happen in those second and third acts that I didn't like, particularly the fact that the team kind of gets split up and some of their storylines are just not very interesting at all. There's some that are just kind of slower and, and boring and there's some that are somewhat interesting but they just don't do a lot with it. It's kind of like they'll hop back to it every once in a while but it's not a major focus. The story with Dom is the one where they place most of their time and it's probably the most interesting of them and the most entertaining of them while also being the most ridiculous of them and the most frustrating as well. So there's that mix going on and I really wasn't a big fan of just the way that they handled and told the story in that way. So I will say this, the first act was good. It, it, it has this nice mix that Fast Five did really well to where there is that absurd style to it and the the things happen that are obviously crazy but there's enough of a realistic idea and approach to it that it's fun even if at times it's unbelievable and then as you move farther into the film it becomes just completely unbelievable and so i, I liked the beginning i hated the end uh particularly the ending ending i'm not gonna go into specifics on that because this is not a spoiler video but there are some things that happen in the finale that I just didn't like at all. There are two things that keep occurring in this franchise that are kind of driving me insane. Like, I'm not going to discuss them because this is a spoiler free. But man, did I not like the ending of this one. It was it, it definitely sets it up for that two more movies that Vin Diesel's promised. But I'm not particularly interested in the coming movies because I didn't really like the way that this one goes. Um, that being said, another thing that I do like about this film would be Jason Momoa. He's probably the best villain that we've had in the franchise since the Shaw Brothers, and particularly Deckard Shaw and Furious 7, who also makes a brief appearance in this film, and he's enjoyable. But Momo really gives a lot to this role, and I like the way that it tied in with Fast Five. I like the way that he kind of handles his character. It can be almost a little annoying at times, 
uh, he's a very different villain than what you kind of see in all the other movies. And so it was kind of nice. It was, it was a new, fresh way to look at things. Momoa did a great job. I'm excited to see how things kind of continue in that road for him. So I, I will say this is a very mixed bag. If you don't like the Fast and Furious movies, you're not going to like this movie. If you like the Fast and Furious movies, like me, you kind of enjoy them, you might find some enjoyment to this one, but you also might end up totally disliking it as well. My opinion, it's just a very mixed bag. That If it was the first half of the movie, or the first act of the movie, if they'd done that the whole time, we could be looking at like one of the third or fourth best Fast and Furious movies, but then the second and third acts just kind of ruined that, and if the whole movie had been like that, this could easily be the worst or close to the worst Fast and Furious movie, so there's a lot of mixed stuff to it. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is in regards to cleanliness. This is a Fast and Furious movie, so the couple things that you really got to focus and, and watch out for is butts. Uh, they like to do those up-close shots of girls walking. This film does have it in there. However, it's less than what you get in some of the other movies. There's only really one section of the film that shows that, and it's when he goes and he's racing in this area of here, which part of the world he's at at the time. It has it there, but other than that, it actually doesn't include a lot of that stuff, which is kind of a nice cleanliness aspect to it that I, I wasn't expecting, because some of these movies do have a lot of it. There's plenty of swearing, there's obviously a lot of action, it's very absurd action, none of it's very gory or overly violent, it's a lot of fire, a lot of explosions, typical Fast and Furious stuff. So I would say aside from the the butt shots and stuff that happens in this, there are there's not much to worry about, but it's not something that I recommend for younger viewers. Um, and it's something if you do want to take younger viewers to, I recommend going with some parents. So as for me, again, it's a very mixed bag. It's a film that started out great and then just lost everything as it continued onward. And for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and just go straight down the middle with it at a C. Again, if it had been like it, how it started the whole time, this would be an amazing movie. It'd be a lot of fun, but it loses that and it just doesn't get as fun in the later half and it becomes more ridiculous and the story's not interesting and it just loses everything. But that's just my quick thoughts on Fast and Furious 10. Have you guys had the opportunity to see it? Are you even planning on seeing it? If so, let me know down in the comments what you thought of it. And always, if you liked this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one.